what's good? I'm back. Um, Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett podcast. Fortunately, today is not really a good day. I got some bad news early on the text from a friend that um, Migos rapper Takeoff was murdered in Houston. And apparently it was over a, a dice game. Um, which is really fucked up. Um, normally I get into a sponsor, but, um, no disrespect to the sponsors, but screw the sponsors today. I'm really upset, man. I'm really upset. Not only cause, um, hold on, I gotta light up, man. I normally don't light up. Got this little piece left. I'm gonna light up. I'm really upset, man, for numerous reasons. And before I get into that, I want to say um, my condolences to Takeoff's family, to Quavo. You know, I recently found out that um, Takeoff was the nephew of Quavo. I thought it was so interesting that um, Quavo was like a two-year-old uncle to, to Takeoff, you know, because I didn't know they were nephew and uncle till they dropped the album Unconfused, which I, I, I love the, the singles they had. Um, this is really fucked up, man. Like he was my favorite Migos rapper. I felt like he was the, 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 he had the best delivery. He was only 28 years old. Um, had his whole life ahead of him. I'm 43 and I still got my whole life ahead of me. Um, so yeah, my condolences to his family. This is, it's so fucked up. I can only imagine what they're going through. Um, I had an uncle that was murdered, but I never knew him and he was murdered before. Um, when I was real, real young, before I even knew he was murdered, um, he was already gone. So I couldn't really have any kind of emotional attachment to it because I didn't really know him. But I really have an emotional attachment to this one. Like the PB and Rock Cat um, that recently um, died, rest in peace to him, the condolences to his family. I wasn't really emotionally attached. I never heard his music. So, you know, it was just a really fucked up thing to me, but I didn't really the emotions didn't hit me. It's like when my boy told me, you know, at first it didn't hit me. And then he told me to look at the video link. He said from world star, which I wish I would have looked at it. it. I mean, that's another thing. World star. That's some shameless shit y'all did. And whoever sold that video to world star, that's some shameless shit. Um, it was some shameless shit, man. And just seeing them, the, video was body laying there and just the reaction man just brought some emotions to me um like i said he was my favorite migos rapper he's only 28 years old the migos have been one of the biggest um groups in hip-hop of my lifetime they've had one of the biggest impacts on hip-hop in my lifetime um You want to talk about pandemics. This is a pandemic. And not just the hip hop, because this is an urban community thing. This is an urban community thing. Um, Benny the Butcher, who's still alive, um, actually got shot in Houston. Also, I want to say he was in Houston, Texas as well. Um, so he was shot. They said he was shot during a private party at a bowling alley in downtown Houston. An investigation is underway. A rapper takeoff. 
the popular group Migos, was fatally shot during a private party at a bowling alley in downtown Houston Tuesday. A representative for the group confirmed um, officers of the Houston Police Department and emergency officials with the Houston Fire Department respond to reports of a shooting at 810 Billards in Bowling, located at 1201 San um, San Juan Sino around 2.40 a.m. Obviously, when they arrived at the scene, they located a large crowd and a man with a gunshot wound to the head or neck. The man, who officers did not immediately identify, was pronounced dead at the scene. According to Sal- Lieutenant Salazar, 40, 50 people were at the location when the shooting took place. The party reportedly ended at 1 a.m., but carried over until the incident occurred. Investigators say they found multiple casings. Um, like, I heard it was over a dice game. And a lot of killings happen over dice games. They've always happened. A lot of killings have always happened over dice games. Um If this was a private party, I wondered, did they know the person? How well did they know the person? Was it just somebody that came with somebody? Uh, was it somebody who not went to the party? I just know this shit is getting out of hand in hip hop. I mean, it's a fucking shame that you can't even make mainstream music for a living without being in your life being in jeopardy. And this is the thing, like they target like um I know like the robbery people typically target all genres. They'll target pop, R and B, they'll target any kind of celebrity. But these shootings and these killings, I mean, these happen in with hip hop artists more than anything. This ain't happening with pop artists rock artists, um, no other genre of music does this happen. And, and that's the thing, like the PB and rock one was a planned robbery that turned into a murder because he didn't give up, wouldn't give up his chains, which, you know, there's a difference between fearless and stupid, man. Like if somebody's robbing you for your jewelry and your chain, just give it up. It's not worth you losing your life. But this seems like an incident that might have went wrong on a dice game. And dice games can go wrong all the time, man. All the time. But it's still a damn shame that somebody has to get killed over a dice game. Um, That's the thing. Like, Hip hop artists are always getting killed usually over money or past beefs. Money or past beefs. Um it, it it's just so hypocritical how they out there saying it's a pan the COVID is a pandemic, but it's not a pandemic when rappers are getting killed left and right. It's not a pandemic when um, more people from ages 18 to 35 actually are being killed by fentanyl overdoses, which has a big effect in the urban community as well. Um, this is a culture problem. This is a extreme culture problem. Because... Um, this is the thing. This didn't happen in the hood. Yes, these might be hood people doing this or people from the hood, but this didn't happen in the hood. You know, now the PB and Rock joint, that was in the hood. Like these cats were literally at a bowling alley at a private party and got killed. Now, I could be wrong of the bowling alley might have been a hood, but I seriously doubt it. Because ain't no hoods in Fayetteville got bowling alleys. You know? And there's only maybe 
two to three bowling alleys in my city. Houston will probably have a lot more. Um, this is a culture problem. This is an extreme culture problem. This hip hop. This is the good and the bad with hip hop, man. Hip hop brings the worst elements to the table. You could bring good elements. You know, we've had the Karis one, you know, the Karis ones of the world. Nowadays, you really only got J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. They're the Karis ones and the pu- public enemies and the poor righteous teachers. But we still have multiple, you know, cats like this the poor righteous teachers, the public enemies, the Karis ones, the dead press. Um, Tribe Called Quest was a very positive group. We've had a lot of super positive rappers back in the 90s. Nowadays, there isn't so much positive rappers. It's all negative, negative, negative. And hip hop just brings all the negative elements. It, it, even if it brings any positive elements, it brings every single negative element to the table that you could think of. And this is the problem I have with hip hop. You know, we hip hop is glorified things that we shouldn't glorify. And we brought elements to the table that have made it dangerous to just to be a, to, it's literally, that's the thing. It's not dangerous to be a musician and and any celebrity can get, um, can be a victim of, of somebody trying to rob them or whatever, because they got money. But this of rappers, I mean, actors ain't getting killed like this. Um, athletes aren't getting killed like this. Um, pop artists, rock artists, any other genre you could think of, you know, pop artists. I don't hear about pop artists going places and getting killed. You know, this is it's fucking sad, man. Is what it is. It's fucking sad. Um, some people would say, you know, would make excuses for this shit. Like, you know, they don't have choices in the in the bad neighborhoods but to rob and steal and kill. Well, this happened at a freaking bowling alley. It's happened at a bowling alley, you know. And if you're shooting dice outside of a bowling alley, well, that's probably a recipe for disaster, man. Um, This is all fucked up any way you could think of it. Whoever killed him over a dice game is fucked up. I mean, this dude was 28 years old. I don't know. That's the thing. The Migos aren't known for just starting shit, man. They're not known for just, you know, getting into shit. They're just dudes that just make music and are super successful at it and and originated a style that a lot of people copied, man. Um, But this shit is getting worse. This shit is getting worse in hip hop. Um, It's a damn shame that it's it's only dangerous to be a a mainstream hip hop artist, but you don't really got to worry about this as a mainstream pop artist. Like I said, they got to worry about getting robbed, but they don't got to worry about getting killed. And pop artists and rock artists, and they're probably giving up the goods as soon as they get robbed. Um, hopefully we'll get more information about this shit. Um, this is going to devastate the hip-hop community. This is going to be devastating for the hip-hop community. Already devastated my day. Um, I mean, I literally had an eight hundred dollar order come through last night, and I had to wait two business days because they held the funds, and that didn't really stress me out, you know. But when I heard this shit, it was just like <sighs> my day was instantly down, man. I mean. Of all people, man, I mean, that went rapper take off one of the amigos. I mean, if it was any one of the amigos, this reaction is gonna be the same, man. 
I mean, it's going to be the same. The hip-hop world is going to react the same. I mean, hip-hop, Migos are, I mean, they're hip-hop royalty, man. And another thing is does, like, you know, I sat there and I said I had to wait two days. I got to wait two business days to see if they're going to, let the funds go through for basically it's a, it's a customer who's in the military. His billing address doesn't match his location address or what he's ordering. Cause he's in the military station somewhere else. And this is a bigger order than he placed last time. So, the, you know, it's, it's, it's understandable. Cause even my site detects it as possible fraudulent payment. Cause the, you know, when your order location doesn't match up with your um, business address, on the card on file, you know, they just question it. Like it just, it's just being safe. So, um, I mean, like I literally got rent due today. I got to wait for funds to be transferred and that didn't really stress me out. But when it's, when I got the text, the more I thought about it, it, it let me realize how small and my new, my problems are. Um, at this given moment, I mean, fucking takeoff is dead, man. I mean, he's gone. He's dead. His life is over with. Um, these are the moments I wish I, I hope I'm wrong about heaven or hell, you know, that hopefully we do go to some kind of place where we're consciously aware, but, um, I just always agreed with OC. We're born to live and we live to die. Life's so fucked up, man. I wonder why. I mean, 28 years old, man, this <sighs> fucking old life is, was ahead of him, man. Um, and not only is his life over, the life of the person who killed him is over. Over what, man? I mean, what? Over what? You killed this man over what? Money? S- uh, something that has no real value in society, but what we say it does? A, a bunch of notebook pieces of paper with a bunch of old crackers' faces on them? A bunch of old white men's faces on him. You killed somebody over that and destroyed. You've taken his life and destroyed your life in the process. Cause they're gonna get. They're gonna find who did it. And he's gonna. He's gone. He's done. That's over with. His life is over with. He's never. He, he's probably never seen the light of day for this. And, I mean, you've literally. destroyed families' lives. You've took a life and you've destroyed your life. Um, not counting the impact it could have on his family members when he goes to prison for the rest of his life. It's like people are out here killing over money and bitches most of the time. Money and bitches. Um, one that one one of those things that has no real value, but what we say, a bunch of notebook paper with a bunch of crackers faces on it, a bunch of honkies faces on it, mayonnaise mammals, as Charlemagne the guy would say, and anybody who's offended by me saying cracker, hey, fuck you, take off is dead. Fuck your sensitive ass fucking feelings. Um, like, yeah, and then women... Um, some of them have no fucking value in life. The, some of them have no fucking value whatsoever. Um, just like a piece of fucking paper with a cracker's faces on it. And they're like a fucking used car when the, the value of them goes, women goes down, the more dicks they suck and fuck. Um, I'm so upset about this shit. I'm so upset about this shit. Um, it's not even because he was one of my favorite 
artists. It's just like it upsets me that when cats this young go, man, um, it it makes me start reevaluating a lot of things in my life. Like when Kobe died, we're like the same age, and it's like, damn, all this shit, like all this shit that Kobe Bryant accomplished, and he had so much more to accomplish. Same thing with Takeoff. All this shit he's accomplished. I just did the top 100 artists for streaming in 2021. Migos was like literally 99, man. 99. You know, they're one of the top 100 streaming groups on the planet, man. Just so much that he accomplished and so much more that he was going to accomplish. And just like that. It's gone. And I can only imagine how Quavo feels um, being his uncle. Like, I got two nephews and a niece. And I can only imagine if something would happen to him of how I would react and how I would feel. Um, I know this much if somebody killed my niece or one of my nephews and I was alive, um, they wouldn't make it to the prison. They wouldn't make it to handcuffs in the prison. Um, I would definitely jeopardize and risk any freedom in life I have left for any kind of revenge. And now that I'm saying Quavo should get revenge for takeoff, I'm just speaking for myself. Of like I would be in revenge mode. I would be in torture mode. Um it would be just like you see in the movies. Um hogtied, tortured, cut from limb to limb. Um there's no way I couldn't not get revenge if somebody killed one of my nephews or my niece. There's no way I could. And not only because I just wanted to get revenge, also because just in case my sister or my brother-in-law would ever contemplate it, I would take that burden off of them, you know, I would be the one, like, see, I have no wife, I have no kids, um, I'm married to my business, I'm married to the music business, um, I love hip-hop, I love music, um, that's why I'm so emotionally invested into this, I would be where I am today if it wasn't for hip-hop music. Let me repeat that. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for hip hop music. So some people, when they be like, well, how can he speak on the culture? You know, he's white. He's just appropriating the culture. No, I'm a necessity to the culture. Why am I a necessity? Because I have services that unsigned artists and musicians need to build their brand and build fan base and build the culture up. I do marketing and advertising for a living and, and hip hop will always need marketing and advertisement. You know, I'm a necessity to this business. You know, um, that's why it affects me. Um, I hate what hip hop has gone. I hate this dark path that hip hop has gone down to. And yes, rappers were getting killed in the nineties. But all of those cats were getting killed typically over beefs. Typically over beefs. Nowadays, rappers are, rappers are getting killed over money and beefs more than, and money more than ever. Like, cause they're, pe predators are preying on them more than ever. Like, 
non-rappers, like real gangsters, real killers, are targeting them and preying on them more than ever. Um, and I was discussing this with an artist that I interviewed named PB Pluto. And we were talking about does artists have to be reality TV shows nowadays? And we both agreed they, they do. And that's the downfall to this shit. The downfall to Quavo and Takeoff and all these rappers uh, being reality TV shows is that these people that are targeting them, these violent criminals and murderers and killers and armed robbers and whatever it is that are targeting them, like, they pretty much um, have the roadmap of everywhere they're going. Like, Everywhere, everywhere these people go, they're like, I'm pretty sure that Takeoff and Quavo or somebody at the private party took, if there's a private party or party somewhere, you best believe there's somebody taking pictures and posting them to social media. That's the same thing that happened with PB and Rock. And people can try to point fingers and point the blame, you know, but part of becoming a successful musician is putting your whole life out there on Front Street as a reality TV show. Everywhere you go, you're posting. Every, I mean, everything they're doing, they're posting. And it sucks. Cause, I mean, because in a content-creating world, you have to create a lot of content. And part of that is, you know, open your... There's going to be a point where Paul Pickett Podcast gets to a certain level. And I'm going to be posting even more. I'm going to be posting so much because I'm a, a Dizzle brand, our Dizzle brand. You know, I don't own a percentage, but I am part of the team. Um, I handle their Facebooks. I help with their TikTok. I help with their website. Uh, I just recently set up their Dizzle brand merch stop on Etsy. When Dizzle hits North Carolina, I'm literally going to be out and about all the time. I'm literally going to be doing shows and events with Dizzle all the time. I'm literally going to be going to restaurant to restaurant promoting Dizzle constantly and I'm going to be taking pictures and video footage and all that constantly putting it out there on front street. So, um, that's the downfall, man, is that if you want to be big as a entertainer, you have to put a lot of your life out there and that's day to day. Like rappers, rappers are definitely day to day. I mean, pup, Whatever they're doing, uh, we're in the studio, video. We're going, performing here, video. We're chill, partying here, video. I mean, there's videos of pics for every single thing going on. Because there's always, you get any kind of party going on anywhere, there's always going to be somebody in there posting to social media. Um. Yeah, man, this is fucked up, man. This is so fucked up. Um, the motherfucker that killed him, I mean, like, give that motherfucker the electric electric chair for all I care, man. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, life in prison is not justice for taking someone's life. I repeat, life in prison is not cold-blooded murder. There's no justice to cold-blooded murder. If it's not self-defense, you know, but I can't, you can't give me an exp, any kind of explanation or excuse 
that warrants shooting somebody in the head or the neck as self-defense. So, yeah, man. Um, look, I'm 30 minutes into this, man. Like, this shit is so upsetting. Um, once again, I want to say rest in peace to take off. Condolences to Quavo and his family. Um, I can only imagine what they're going through. I can only imagine what's going through Quavo's mind right now. Um, if he's anything like me, he might be willing to risk it all. He might be willing to risk it all at this very moment. Um, and I think uh, what Offset is their cousin. So I know this is, this is I mean, this is going to hit the hip hop world hard, man. There's still, I like, I just text a friend, friend of mine, he didn't know, and he's just like, this is some fucked up shit, man. I mean, and even if you didn't, listen to his music or anything of that nature. It's some fucked up shit, man. And World Star, it's some shameless shit what y'all did, man. If y'all want to talk about cancer, motherfuckers, cancer World Star. I mean, that's some shameless shit that they did, man. And whoever fucking sent the video to him, you're just as shameless. I hope, I mean, if you were anybody that was close to them and know them personally, I mean, you should be ashamed of yourself. I don't know how you fucking sleep at night. So, yeah. Um, once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. My reaction to take off. Rest in peace, my brother. My favorite Migos artist. I just loved his delivery. I thought he had the best delivery on the crew. Um, I mean, he just seemed humble. Play his part, team player. It's fucked up, man. Fucked up day in hip hop today. Fucked up day in society. Um, I better not see any fucking news. Like, I better not see mainstream media put pumping any news. Like, that's more important than this today, you know. And like I said, it just basically opens my eyes up to how minor my problems are. Like, when business sales are down or I might think I might be late on rent or something. Like, it, it makes my problems so, so minor, man. And it also makes me reevaluate my life. Um, my decisions in life, um, my attention to detail and just everything about my life, you know, it really does, man. And it also lets me know that, I I haven't accomplished shit and I'm not working hard enough when, you know, successful cats like this go so young, man, and have their whole life ahead of them and so much more success ahead of them, man. Thank you for tuning in and I'm out.